you want to take control of your life, beat phone addiction, any other addiction, maybe you should try a dopamine fast. So I recently did a 40-hour dopamine fast over the weekend. I'm going to explain everything and how I did it. But before I even do that, what is dopamine? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter in your brain that basically rewards you anytime you do something good. So let's say you bite into a cupcake, it sends a reward signal, dopamine's triggered. You check your Instagram, someone's giving you a like, dopamine is triggered. Now, when we have so many trivial things tr triggering our dopamine receptors, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, doesn't matter, ding, 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 those things are constantly saturating your brain with dopamine, and it makes it extremely hard to focus and get what you wanna get done, okay? Whether you want to work out more, eat better, uh, change careers, meditate, it's very hard to do that when your brain is constantly saturated with dopamine because you're constantly getting those signals all day. So it's like your brain is going on autopilot and it's very difficult to control. So I'm gonna teach you how to grab the reins. This is a more extreme approach for sure, but I hope that you will try it out yourself and find the effects very useful. So we'll start off with the rules, okay? Grab out a piece of paper or just check the link, uh, the comments down below. I'll put the rules in there. But basically, 40-hour dopamine fast. I did mine starting from Friday at 5 p.m. till Sunday at 10 a.m. I think it's maybe 41 hours, but 40 hours, whatever. Um, yeah, so I suggest starting Friday at 5 p.m. and going until Sunday in the morning, 10 a.m. If you want, you can try an easier 24-hour fast. Basically, the rules are no pleasure. Anything you find pleasurable, you're not allowed to do. Examples. Electronics, no electronics, no computers, no iPods, no phones, uh, nothing electronic. Okay, that means no music, no Kindles, no reading, no books allowed, no food. Okay, food is pleasure, not allowed food. You're going to be fine for that time being. You'll even lose some weight. Nothing sexual, okay? Uh, no coffees, no teas, no juice, no etc. Just water. And if you want to go crazy, don't have water. Your choice. No talking, no socializing, no seeing people. No exercising, okay? That's my list. Basically, you're staring at home, sitting at a wall, and for me, where I am right now, I have stuff to look at. So every time I see it, I see some books, it's like, oh, I wanna read that, and my brain fires up a little bit. But what I ended up doing was I did most of it in my sleeping room where there isn't much of anything. So I'm literally just there by myself, contemplating, basically letting all the dopamine um, break down in my brain so that I can focus and concentrate much better, much easier. So that the right things will actually stimulate dopamine instead of the wrong things, okay? I.e. phone, dinging all the time, computers, emails, the wrong things versus, okay, the amount I craved wanting to read a book was insane. It's like, oh God, let me stimulate my mind by reading a book instead of watching something. That's magical. If something can make you want to read a book that badly, it's good for you. Um, environment control is extremely important. So for me, I'm fortunate enough to have the apartment all alone. Um, other options are vipassanas. You know, you can do one, three, 10 day retreats where literally they just, you're not allowed to talk for 10 days, they meditate you. Um, alternatively, you can rent a hotel. So let's say you have a family and you can't have peace and quiet, go rent a hotel room, go camping, make it happen. Okay, what you can do is journal, which is what I did. Uh, meditate, walk in nature, so long as it's not you know, stimulating you in some sense, and contemplate life. The whole point of this, for me anyways, is to contemplate life. Why are you here? What do you wanna do? What don't you wanna do? What bullshit do you wanna give up? That is basically breaking the addiction and is allowing you to see the patterns that you're falling in, you know, waking up every morning having coffee, um, drinking alcohol every night, going out with friends and wasting money or whatever your vice is, smoking. You take that out, you empty your body and you, you might suffer, I, I don't know, I, I don't really have those, I don't drink, I don't do coffee, I don't do drugs, so I don't know what the withdrawal symptoms are from that, but be prepared. Um, and I want to get into some stages. So the beginning, as I said, I started on a Friday evening. Um, it wasn't that bad because, you know, I've eaten, I've entertained. I started to simmer down, so like I didn't watch TV, didn't look at my phone, I just read a book. And then at five o'clock, it's like, okay, this is it. I'm just going to sit here and do nothing, basically. That's a good idea because you only have five hours, maybe do nothing, go to sleep. Um, I had some difficulty 
Well, I'll tell you about the negative. So that's, so that's the beginning. It's the beginning. You're all good. Um, before you even start, though, I recommend just Google some journal prompts. Think about goals, uh, any relationships, crises you have right now, opportunities, um, paths in life. And what this dopamine fast really lets you do, uh, if you're if you're business oriented or whatever, is it lets you sit down and do deep thinking, so that you can actually explore possibilities, multiple angles, and decide what you actually want, and do so in an uninterrupted manner. So I would write something, and I'd come back to it an hour or two later after I've just sat and done nothing, and it's like, oh, I got this new idea about this. Okay, let's come back to it. Um, so just have like a bunch of prompts that you go through. You don't, there's no system, it's just, if you wanna do it, do it. If you don't, don't even do it. It's really just to get rid of the dopamine in your brain so that when you come back to the real world, um, you have some perspective, you have some more control over yourself. It's a lot easier. It's like sugar addiction. If you're constantly eating cupcakes and that sweetness is always saturating you, you need more and more sweetness to get the job done. So if you try a new diet and it completely cuts the sugar, everything tastes horrible. But after you know a few days of absolutely zero sugar, everything else starts to have life again and taste again. That's that analogy with the reading, like craving reading versus watching Netflix. Netflix is easy, okay? Reading is not as easy. So when you just simmer down, and get rid of all that dopamine, it makes it a lot easier to get that same rush from reading a book as you do from Netflix, okay? Because you're not overdoing it. You're backing down on the stimulus, and now a lower level stimulus can still get you that excitement versus, you know, when you have the Netflix all the time, your stimulus is up here and you try reading a book, it's like, oh, no, no, I'm not getting it quick enough. It's that idea, like you've dropped your threshold and now any little thing is interesting and you want to do it. And because you spend so much time contemplating, you'll actually want to do it and you know what you want to do. So Saturday, middle, um, after waking up, I really wanted to exercise. I was going to, and then I said, no, you know what? That's a stimulus, so I'm just not going to exercise. So I didn't. And what you'll notice in that whole day or the midpoint of the fast is that you're going to start to want to put yourself into the future and just say, okay, I'm just going to wait it out and think about how awesome the future is going to be once I get out of it. Try not to do that. Instead, try and be in the moment and be in the emptiness, be in the loneliness, be with yourself and be happy about it because chances are you don't really ever get to experience that in the way that you would by doing this, okay? So don't put yourself in the future, just wait it out and be in the moment, right? Okay, so yeah, so choose. This is a little bit on the goal side, but basically if you're gonna do goal setting during this time, instead of thinking, um, I wanna be X weight, I want to be healthy, I want to earn $100,000, whatever the goal is, take that goal and break it down into the core habit. Okay, so let's say you want to be, I don't know, you want to lose 50 pounds. Instead of saying I want to lose 50 pounds, say I'm in the habit of working out every day. I'm in the habit of eating healthy every day. Because the weight is a result that's a lagging indicator of the habit. If you're the person that does the habit, the result will come. And that's extremely important to frame it in that mindset and to also frame in the big picture. Don't think, you know, two weeks, three months. If you make a goal for a year to 18 months, chances are you're not gonna be disappointed if you're making a small step to it every single day and you become the person, you become the person that does the habit to get you there, okay? You will not be disappointed. So think long-term and think about the habits that will make you the person that gets those results. Okay. And lastly, the end of the fast. Um, I had a horrible sleep, I'll be straight. I, I just laid in bed for a long time till I kind of fell asleep for maybe two or three hours. And then the morning comes, hallelujah. Um, before that though, what I suggest before you go to bed, you've done all your contemplating, you're kind of, you've decided, you make some decisions, plan your day for tomorrow. Open up a journal, take a post-it note, whatever. Write down the time you're gonna wake up, what you're gonna do in the morning, what you're gonna do in the afternoon, like literally eight o'clock. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. If this works for you, do it for a few days, but at least give it that one day's opportunity where you're completely clear of mind and ready to go that you know exactly what you want to do and the next day you can accomplish it because your dopamine's low. Any little thing is going to stimulate you. You're going to give you that reward system. You know, I went to the gym. Ah, oh, felt great. Uh, ate healthy, felt great. Because you've removed a lot of the poison and the addiction, 
especially in 48 hour dopamine, like close to 48 hours, if you haven't had coffee or tea or whatever, like you're gonna feel the withdrawal symptoms, but it's gonna help you beat the addiction and get over that hump in the initial part of it.